The next uh, speaker for today is Mr. Venu Gopal Vijendran, President, India Business Intas Pharmaceuticals. And he is going to tell us about evolving role of a pharma field force. This is one of the major uh, queries in many minds that how a pharma field force should evolve now to become some something to contribute something relevant to this industry. And uh, he has comprehensive experience in the pharmaceutical industry, traveling both developing and developed markets. During his tenure, he has principally been involved in managing businesses and for a span of two years, set up the operations of Daichi Sankyo in India as a startup company. An expert in strategic and operational management, he currently heads Intas domestic India business operations looking after all strategic business units comprising of various therapeutic portfolios. In his profound experience, he has uh, served Elkem Laboratories as president, Orchid Pharma as chief executive domestic formulation business, Rambexi Laboratories as vice president, Daiichi Sankyo India Pharma as president to name a few. So this is a short intro to Venu Gopal Vijendran sir. Over to you sir for your presentation. Is my screen visible to everybody? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, uh, thank you very much, Swati. Thanks, everybody, and uh, let me take up the session from two contexts. Uh, the context is, uh, you know, there is an ongoing debate about, uh, you know, promotion to customers, inducements. And there is patient centricity, and I'll restrict myself purely to patient centricity. And how do we try and build the future? And what are the checks and balances that we need to put in this while we bring about the concept of patient centricity? You know, there is a wind blowing uh, through the pharmaceutical industry, a force with the power to fundamentally transform every function, every stage of the pipeline, and every market. This force is driven neither by cost containment nor regulatory pressure, and it's, you know, uh, it's a clever gimmick. I'm not able to see the full screen because of all the panels coming in between, you know. Can, is there some way you can remove these uh, speakers panel from here? We generally said there will be... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Satish. So, sir, there will be a one... Uh, the small panel that is there, uh, you'll find uh, a small bar. On the, there are three signs uh, there, a small bar and a uh, square. So just click over that small bar. This will disappear. Okay, fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and, and it's neither a clever gimmick uh, dreamt by management consultant nor a rejerk reaction to a market dynamic. Uh, in fact, this force is the patient, of course, and the end user of our medicines. But I'm leaving you all with a question yet. What should be our focus and where? And, and this I'm saying because in the melee of patient centricity, uh, we should not travel a journey so far away that we lose the core essentials of our business and move only into patient centricity. And I would like to address that a little comprehensively a little later, and I will give you reasons what can possibly be the panacea for this kind of a thinking. A very simple statement, patient perspective. Uh, we need to develop and inculcate it right from the start. It's not something as an organization ethos that you can do uh, suddenly out of somewhere, uh, changing your business strategy into just a patient strategy. You've got to bring patient as a composite part of the business strategy rather than just as a sole strategy. Patient centricity can improve healthcare access across the board. You know, you have the referent clinician, you have the primary care physician, and you have the specialist, and you have the patient cases. Now we need to try and understand, uh, there are three elements at the bottom, which is a referent clinician, a primary care physician, and a specialist. And if these three are not interlinked properly, your patient centricity will go for a toss. It's not gonna work. So patient centricity can improve healthcare access across the board, but what is it that we need to do as 
uh, healthcare providers to bring this concept to the table. Patient centricity can also affect the availability of the products. Patient care groups can enable evolving a better outcome for the patients in the days to come. And patient support programs can enable access to holistic treatment in the days to come. So these are some statements and they sound like motherhood statements for sure. And that's where uh, you need to understand that while these are statements, we need to articulate an integrated strategy which encompasses all these things to provide patient support programs. Can it become a game changer? Yes, surely it can become a game changer. Let's try and see what we have to do for that. And the key question that you want to ask is, how do we bring about patient care or patient centricity? Is it accessibility? Is it affordability? Is it availability? Is it education? Is it engagement? Is it counseling? Or is it simply put, the administration mechanism which can encompass all these elements in bringing about patient centricity? I'm not going to talk about disease. I'm not going to talk about specialists. I'm not going to talk about diabetes, rheumatology, oncology. You call it what you may want. I'm not going to do that. I'm just leaving behind a question. Is it the administration of a company which can enable this journey towards patient centricity? And I'd like to take one small example. My own company is a plethora of divisions dealing with practically every kind of specialist business that exists at the marketplace, whether it's diabetes, rheumatology, whether it is dialysis, whether it's oncology, whether it's uh, you know plasma products, whether it's hospital care, whether it's transplant business, whether it's IVF, whether it is gynecology, urology, you name it, they are present in every single therapeutic area. The beauty is, for the last 10 years, barring a couple of times, we have never brought in the word patient centricity in any of our business platforms. Outcome, the company from being somewhere about 15, 16, 20th position a couple of 10, 15 years back is riding the wave and is among the top seven companies. We don't build patient centricity at all in talking to the people. We build patient centricity as a strategy. We don't call it as patient centricity. We talk about marketing programs which talk about the, the concept of what do we do to a patient, the concept of how do we do to a physician and to a paramedical staff and to an industry. And that's where I'd like to bring this holistic approach into patient centricity. You're you are seeing four medias over here. You have one circular media of a stethoscope binding a doctor to a patient, and that is a primary transaction point. A patient falls ill and he goes to a doctor. A doctor could be a GP, could be a specialist, could be and that is where the interface happens. This, I call it as a primary interface, where a doctor deals with a patient, records, literatures, you know, all kinds of pathology reports, radiology reports, clinical assessment, whatever you may call it. And this is a primary interface. And then you have a secondary interface, which is paramedical staff, nurses, pharmacists, technicians, industry, manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers, hospital pharmacies. And to this, you are now bringing in patient care groups, caregivers, insurance, demonstrators, and NGOs. Unless these three, the paramedical staff, the industry, and the support givers are integrated together, there is never going to be a concept of patient centricity ever in this industry. A patient who falls ill is not going to first think, what is an industry going to do? What is a nurse going to do? What is a pharmacist going to do to me? 
The patient who first falls ill will rush to a doctor and follow exactly the doctor's advice to the team. Therefore, the companies who are directly reaching out to patients, I'd like to give them a note of caution. Do this only with the acceptability of the customer, which is your doctor. Do this by engaging the doctor in the scientific programs. Do this by building a trust factor, which is through the doctors and not through the industry. Ashok made a very important point that the patient just does not believe the industry so much. It's natural, it doesn't believe. For the last eight decades or more, since the pharmaceutical industry is alive, the media of communication to a patient has always been a doctor. So build your trust factor with the doctors first. Today, even doctors don't trust pharmaceutical industry. So if you want to bring patient centricity, trust your doctor. Get your customer who is your doctor, who's going to write your products, price immaterial, facilities immaterial, product and its quality as an organization is prime to you and go to them and then build in all the other elements of paramedical staff, nurses, pharmacists, technicians, laboratories, wholesalers, retailers, hospitals as a secondary parameter. And the third tertiary parameter who's beginning to play a very important role, who has direct access to the patient is patient care groups, caregivers, insurance companies, demonstrators, and NGOs, where the transaction happens. So you have a service with the customer and you have a transaction point. And you have a middle point, which is interfaced intermittently to the patient, which is a paramedical staff, nurses, pharmacists. If you recognize this relationship, patient centricity will happen automatically. You don't need to worry about it at all. In India, till today, patient centricity has all worked on a patient support program network. And I'm bringing this slide essentially to drive home a point that the patient support program started with one simple aspect. The multinational companies launched their innovative products and while they launched their innovative products, there is yet a single example in the whole gamut of the industry where a multinational has said that Indian patients got to pay for their own medicines. And therefore, how do I make it accessible, affordable, and available to these people? If you don't deal with these three parameters, you are not going to bring patient centricity into the framework. A patient support program or a patient access program works well for oncology, transplant, maybe a rheumatology, maybe an osteoporosis kind of a segment. Take an example of a diabetes care program and let us assume there are a host of 10 new molecules to be launched tomorrow, once a day, once a week, once a month, once a year. And they're going to cost you 10 lakh rupees, 5 lakh rupees. So neither have you made it affordable, nor have you made it accessible, nor will it be easily available because the retailers are not going to own it. So you've got to work around a module. How do I bring these three elements comprehensively into the common man's domain if he has to be serviced? And if your patient access program or a support program will work towards this objective, you are going to win the battle, not otherwise. So you need to have an analysis. What is the current patient pathway? You need to have an activation of the mechanism. How do I engage the patient with the healthcare physicians? I need to have an implementation which is going to access the nook and corners of the country. I have to evaluate an ongoing mechanism of measuring, reporting the program, to the stakeholders through various communication measures and design a very innovative PAP or PSP, which brings, defines, and brings all the people into the platform. 
Why I'm saying this today is today, there are a multitude of Indian companies who have uh, made biosimilars or the products available at the marketplace through this module and have been able to provide access and affordability to a multitude of companies. Examples, uh, Dr. Reddy's laboratories, maybe an Intas, maybe a Sipla, maybe a Lupin, have made products available to the common man and they have progressed significantly in the leadership arena by capturing the mind of the patient and making sure that they are there to serve the patients. Serve the patients means I need to make sure treatment happens. I need to make sure that his disease condition is bettered. I need to make sure there is a continuity of treatment. And I need to make sure that I also give him the necessary incentive to be involved into the whole program. If I really look at it, what happens in this chain? There is a manufacturer, there's a wholesaler or a direct purchaser, there's a pharmacy and the patient and consumer. If I don't deal with this chain in a pricing model, which is the right formula for the patient, I will never win. I have to define what do I need to do in terms of the average manufacturer price and what do I need to do from a wholesale acquisition price to moving into a patient acquisition price and what is the actual acquisition cost. If I define these paradigms clearly, I will become patient centric. Let me ask a different interesting question. I have this beautiful clinic. <coughs> If I can think of making this clinic as a media, it becomes engaged for me to do this beautifully. If I don't do this, I am unable to build this opportunity into the segment of the patient's mind as to what are the components of the disease that I am likely to have. How will this entry into any one of these three rooms defined here is going to allay my fear. And can I, can I bring a virtual clinic through these mechanisms of using the clinic as a media to educate the patient? The lesser I bring fear into the mind of the patient, the faster I gain the patient centricity into the domain. You look at the patient cases, a point that I referred to a little earlier, there's a referring physician, there's a primary care physician, and there's a specialist. As an organization, focus your energies here in gaining trust and acceptability. Not every physician would be very comfortable if any of the organizations or the nurses or everybody directly reaches out to patients and starts educating them. Patient centricity is not about reaching patients. Patient centricity is about making programs which are more patient friendly. An organization need not even be visible to the patient. Even if he's going to make this program friendly to the patient through any of the people, whether it is the primary care physician, the specialist, the referring physician, or the hospital, he becomes patient centric rather than business centric. I would like to say that patient centric is the key to profitability because if a doctor talks about your company, the doctor talks about your company because you've done clinical trials, you've done clinical data, you've shown efficacy trials, you've shown accessibility trials, availability trials, affordability trials. You're shown that a patient need not be worried. You're shown that a patient is comfortable in dealing with the disease. These are programs which you got to deal through the customer. To all people in the pharmaceutical industry, I'd like to say your doctor is an important element of patient centricity. And as long as you empower him to continue being patient centric, your job is easily achieved. Many people take this on their own uh, domain and try to reach out to the customer. Many people do it. And according to me, that may not be 
a panacea to the industry from a patient centricity point of view. You may not be able to understand what complexities medications can have, whether you can reach out to them directly, not reach out to them, and therefore the education part of it, leave it with the physician. Coming to improving access to medical care, we should look at support and services. We should be transparent in our approach. We should involve our R&D to make more products available to them. Quality and information we need to provide to say what kind of checks and balances we go through. We need to encourage patient group interrelationships, education to them, provide patient safety, and also at the end have an equitable access through various kinds of products and services that we provide. This set of eight domains that we have enables proper medical care, improves the access, and ensures that the doctor-patient bond is omnipresent through the service that we provide to the various stakeholders in the industry. So my advice to all the people is, while we do patient services in terms of demonstration, et cetera, it is important keep the clinician in mind and make him the nodal point of your service offering to the industry. And that's where we then say that we are able to have a holistic approach, whether there is a mission, whether there's care, whether there's comfort, whether there's patient and family, whether there is a welcome into the whole domain or all of the information which is dealt with in a patient-centered care through transparency, your patient is just going to have that belief if you provide this in one setting. Don't have multiple settings into the whole domain. That's when we move from patient-centered to a health orientation, which deals with stress, which provides him with comfort. He is comfortable in dealing with his day-to-day -day life. He knows his healthcare is taken care of. He relaxes. He has an environment which deals with him. It gives a complete wellness care and not just a patient-centered, you know, outpatient, elder services, skilled nursing services, behavior, home care. These are our day-to-day -day job. You got to move towards the right side of the segment. And to me, patient centricity is all about a peace of mind happiness, wellness, and you have a whole range of it which brings about that comfort to the people. Intas today is following this in a very big way. That's why we have multiple uh, uh, specialist businesses. We deal with the customers, very less directly with the patients. My own belief, uh, internationally as well, because ours is a restricted industry, our job, to provide information, access, and domains of medical information should remain with the paramedical staff and the medical staff, who in turn should deal directly with the patients through the programs that we give. I'd like to end this with a very simple and a humble submission to all of you. As I understand, patient centricity is empowering the doctor to give comprehensive information about you, your products, and your services to the patient. Thank you very much. Any questions? I'd be keen to handle them. Thank you, Vijayendran, sir. Thank you for a presentation and taking us through a way out how, how it could be done. There were good insights, more compliments. A question I'll take. And after that, we will break for lunch for 10 minutes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, let me take up a question, sir. Just a second. It is related to doctors that uh, <laughs> how can doctor be focused on a patient centricity uh, thing, you know? If, if, if pharma companies even wants to become patient-centric, how, how will you deal with the transactional business part of it? 
let me uh, let me give a small insight into this uh, common conflict of transactional business versus educational business and patient centricity transactional business everybody is painting it as the biggest villain in the industry it depends upon what you transact you may be transacting clinical trials you may be transacting data you may be transacting education i'll ask you a question when you go to a shopping mall what kind of products and services do you tend to look at you tend to look at schemes you tend to look at offers you tend to look at value for money if there is a 1 plus 1 shirt available all the 350 participants here i guarantee you would buy 1 plus 1 shirt if it's a good branded shirt coming from your interest so if a doctor is going to look at value for money why do you call that as a negated business domain if i am going to give a doctor a beautiful uh, a litman stethoscope and i am going to say this is going to help you in your percussions and ability to diagnose better why do some companies come and say it is transactional business and not if the same litmans is given by simpler for respiratory medicine it would be viewed as a most relevant input in terms of enabling a doctor for better diagnosis so i would like all of you to recondition your thought process yes don't give money and make a doctor write your product that's maybe a pure mercenary transaction which is not good you may be trading in information clinical data trial access to information access to medical knowledge patient centricity is all about empowering the doctor to have a comprehensive knowledge about your programs in helping the patient in making the product available to the patient in providing a price point which enables the doctor to say 90% of my patients can access this product at this price and therefore i will write this product providing schemes which enable wider distribution at the marketplace so that retailers have your medicines to enable dispensation if you do that more number of patients are getting treated if more number of patients are getting treated you are enabling health for all that's my concept of a patient centricity patient centricity is empowering your doctor to give a comprehensive service to your patient perfect perfect rajendra sir yeah. and uh, can i get present yes uh, all the recordings of the sessions would be available at pharma state academy and you will be able to access it most pharma companies are looking not at patients but at each other to take a step uh, find success and just copy that <laughs> that is a comment okay. <laughs> right Yeah. please share two of your favorite examples of patient centricity in mncs so in your own companies sir there would be examples in our own companies i don't mind sharing we launched monoclonal antibodies and we made sure that almost all the oncologists had access to those products we also launched a monoclonal antibody for the treatment of uh, wet uh, amd uh, which is age related macular disorders and we brought down the the entire concept to say how the product meets international spec uh, specs how the product has got a quality orientation and made the doctor access to the patients and say that i will give it to you from it's not just a rich man's disease it's a disease which straddles across society i also had patient support programs i also had patient access programs i also had patient affordability programs so i brought in all the three elements and today we are the market leaders in a couple of these monoclonal antibodies simply by accessibility and availability so i made sure an oncology product is not just in class 1 city it is also available in tier 2 and tier 3 markets so a doctor who goes to those markets and practices 
gets this product. So we made sure our cold chain is available across everywhere. The way Nova Nordisk and Abbott made sure the uh, the cold chain is available in the nooks and corner for insulins, we did that for oncology products. And that's how today we find ourselves to be among the top two oncology country companies in India today. So products, R&D, a distribution, pricing, it's a comprehensive package. It's not just one or two things for patient-centric marketing. Perfect. Everything needs to be dovetailed. Wonderful. That is, Wonderful. That is true, Vijendran sir. That is so true.